cow. That was, whew. That song always gets me in the feels I, I can't. That was so beautiful. Thank you all so much for singing that. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. I'm, like, really giddy, actually, because I, I haven't been in Texas for a long time, because I went to school at BYU and then decided to go on a mission, so it's been around, like, three years or something, so being here, I'm just, I love Texas. Um, but I'm Christina Packard, and I serve my mission in the Alabama Birmingham Mission, um, America's Best Mission, and <laughs> it was cool because a lot of people would wonder where I'm from, because I'm half Filipino, so we kind of throw them off and say, oh, I'm actually from Texas, and they loved how I was from Texas. They'd say, what part? And I'd say, I'm from San Antonio. And they'd say, oh, we love San Antonio. He said, have you been in the Alamo? I'm like, yeah, I've been in the Alamo. Have you been in the Riverwalk? Oh, yes, I've been in the Riverwalk. And <laughs> so I was very, I was always really proud to say I'm from San Antonio. I love this ward. It's changed a lot since I've been here, but I see a lot of familiar faces that I love so dearly. Um, but um, my mission meant everything to me. I, I, it's hard for me to express articulate how I feel in just words, but um, I love it so much. I loved it. I love it with all my heart. Um, and so my area was the Alabama, Birmingham area. It was a little bit of Georgia, and then you had some Mississippi, and then some Tennessee on the top. And um, so I was really fortunate to serve in southern Alabama, and I, it transferred me out to the Mississippi, Tennessee area. I was there for a good chunk. Um, but that's the Bible Belt, so you've got a lot of everybody. you got Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, everything you can think of under the sun. Um, and the people there are just, because um, I grew up in Texas, so I thought, oh, I'm used to Southern. But no, it's like deep Southern there, deep South. Everybody wants to feed you fried okra, um, wrapped in bacon, butter, slap some butter on it, all that. Lots of food. Love, people love talking about their church. We just go into Walmart all the time and just say, what church do you go to? And we would just be talking there for hours if I wanted to. So it was, I, I just felt so lucky to serve in the coolest place in the world. Um, and the thing is, even if they don't want to listen to your message, they'd say, oh, well, do you want some blackberry cobbler on your way out? I'm like, yes, thank you so much. Um, but, you know, I, I really, I feel like Hammond, when he was with his brethren in the Book of Mormon, he says, um, yea, my heart is full and I will rejoice in my God. My heart is so full, and I, I'm so grateful for my Heavenly Father for um, sending me to such a wonderful place. Um, and so I wanted to just share three things that I've learned. Um, my spiritual journey kind of started with the Book of Mormon. Um, I have a wonderful older brother, Blake, who I asked him a question. I said, Blake, I, I know that God loves me, but I feel like you know, I've never really received an answer to my prayer. And he said, he said, Tina, I know God knows you, and he loves you, and he does answer your prayers, you just don't know how to recognize those answers. And I was like, oh, look, I never thought of that before. Okay. So he encouraged me to read the Book of Mormon for the first time, um, all the way through. So that's what I did. I started reading the Book of Mormon, and I just fell in love with it, and I knew it was the Word of God, and decided, all right, let's do this, I'm going to go on a mission. And so... Um, I remember my first experience reading it, I, I was able to feel the love of God so strongly, more clearly, and recognize that love, like like was talking about, recognizing those answers. And so, um, there's this one family we were, we tracked it into, they're called the Bean family, and sweet, sweet family, it was Sonia Maurice and Legina Destiny, and they, um, they had been baptized in the Baptist church, but the father Maurice hadn't been baptized. And I was like, okay, that's our end. So we introduced the Book of Mormon to them and invited them to read it. And it was um, over the next couple of months, it was so wonderful to see the, the change in their family as they read the Book of Mormon. Um, you could feel the difference. It was like tangible. You could feel the Spirit just come into the home as they would read and pray together. And they were baptized, and now they're working towards going to the temple. Um, I just, the Book of Mormon brings light into my life. Um, I love how President Nelson talks about um, thinking about what your life would be like without it, and it's, um, it's hard for me to imagine. Um, but I, I love the Book of Mormon and testify that it is the Word of God. And then the second experience I wanted to share was um, this man named Emilio. 
he was, this was in Mississippi, so northern Mississippi. Actually, no, he was in Tennessee. And so um, my companion and I, the day before, we were doing a comp study. We are having this role play. And we were really praying about what we should role play because my mission president always told me when you role play, it's spiritually creating what you want to happen. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. So um, we both decided to use the Book of Mormon to answer questions to the soul. So one of us decided, okay, I'm going to play someone who um, is you know, feeling inadequate and feeling um, kind of depressed, those things. And, and then my companion did somebody who wondered why does bad thing happen to good people. And so we role played that out. Well, the next day, we were attracting in this trailer park, and we ran into Emilio. And Emilio, um, we went in thinking we were going to teach about the gospel, but as he opened up to us, he looked at us, and he said, um, Sisters, I have two questions. He said, why does good, bad things happen to good people? And, and I, I'm not, I'm feeling sad in my life. And we were able to use the, those scriptures that we used just the day before. And it was a huge testimony built to me that God, our loving Heavenly Father, is so aware of us. That when we pray to Him, He does in fact listen and He does answer. And um, what we say, what we think, it does matter to Him. And I was able to see how He is in the details of our lives. If we just recognize it, if we look back and see, we can see His hand in everything. And that's just, that's so exciting to me. I, I, I just sat there and I'm very grateful. Um, and then I wanted to read this, this, um, well, first I wanted to share one more um, quick experience. Um, I was about halfway through my mission, about nine months, and I wanted, I was kind of struggling, feeling a little inadequate, and I, I talked to my mission president, and I said, President Sainsbury, how can I become closer to the Savior? I'm struggling, I need, I, need, I need help. And he said, Sister Packard, whenever you are attracting or biking or praying or doing anything, testifying, teaching people, just imagine that Jesus Christ is right by you, that he's right by your side. Like, I want you to imagine that. I said, okay, President, I'll do that. And so I, I started doing that. I, I would do it anywhere I went, whenever we would teach, anytime we were biking, I would imagine that the Savior was right behind me. And brothers and sisters, my whole mission changed. That was the turning point. It was the game changer. When I realized that it wasn't about me at all, this was all about Jesus Christ and what he can do for people, what we can't do for them, um, or what they can't do for themselves. And it made me think of this scripture. In Moses 6.31, it says, and when Enoch had heard these words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord and spake before the Lord, saying, Why is it that I have found favor in thy sight? And am but a lad, and all the people hate me, for I am slow of speech, wherefore am I thy servant? And the Lord said unto Enoch, Go forth and do as I have commanded thee, and no man shall pierce thee. Open thy mouth, and it shall be filled, and I will give thee utterance. For all flesh is in my hands, and I will do as seemeth me good. Say unto this people, Choose ye this day to serve the Lord who made you. Behold, my spirit is upon you, wherefore all thy words will I justify. And the mountain shall flee before you, and the rivers shall turn from their course, and thou shalt abide in me, and I in you. Therefore, walk with me. I love that scripture. And I know that no matter how far we fall, Christ's arms are ever ready to lift us and heal us. Whenever we feel like we want to give up or we feel like we can't go anymore, we can remember that he's walking with us. And that there was one who descended lower and one who suffered longer. That he endured eternal pain and that he did it all alone. I know that Christ endured it all, that he overcame the world. That we, brothers and sisters, might overcome as well. I testify of our loving Heavenly Father that He lives in His Son, Jesus Christ, is the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. I know Him. I love Him. I love this church. I love being a member of this church. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.